Jambo Rafiki, I'm Elizabeth from Kasiwa82 and I hope you are doing really well. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. I release two videos a week. On Tuesdays, I talk about all things books, and on Fridays, I talk about all things journal and creative play. As always, there's a link to these playlists up above as well as down below. It's Friday, so it's time for another Friday flip, and what I'm flipping this last couple of weeks are these three spiral bound journals. I've already flipped this one and that one and I'll leave links for you if you'd like to go take a look at that. And what we're going to do today is flip the third in this particular series. So as with the other two, these are really inexpensive watercolor paper that are cut in half. I use 9 by 12 sheets of paper cut in half and I had them spiral bound um, at Staples really inexpensively and the covers are the cardboard that comes on the backing of a paper pad. So one of the things if you've seen the last couple of videos you will have noticed that I went ahead and added something to the cover here. This was blank all this time but I figured while I was working on my um, creative play journal yesterday I found this piece um, from a flyer that I kind of like and I thought might as well put it up here. So let's go ahead and flip through this one. This starts in 2012. So again, it's really fun in this series going back and looking at some of the older journals that I filled up as well as um, thinking about what worked and didn't work, how my style has changed or not changed over the course of the years. As with my journals today, you will notice that I always have um, art that I sketch watercolors in this case and there's always some writing. I always date because um, it's interesting to always go back like when you take a look at all the journals if you don't keep dates you have no idea when you actually play with this. So this is 2012 I can see here the summer season and this starts in June which means there's a journal that's that is the first half of this year somewhere else in my stash and you know I'll see if I can find it. So anyways, it's um, sketching, there's always creative play. I love the idea of creating various kinds of grids and filling up the grids in a variety of ways. And you know, it's kind of fun. It's interesting how cool it looks when the grid is filled out. Now, I noticed that in this particular journal, I have a couple of double page spreads. It's not something that I do often. And I should go back to doing that because I just really like how that looks. So. While I primarily use watercolors, every now and then in these older journals particularly you'll see acrylic. So this entire page is done with acrylics. Same thing here. That's acrylic in the background and then I'm sketching from um, comics that I'm reading. As always, there's a link to my Goodreads account down below if you'd like to come along and say hi there. Sketching, I kind of like the idea of this as well as sketching on paper that is not actually made to take watercolors. It's kind of nice to see the text come through and I should do a little bit more of that. So these journals, and I've, I've done that recently as well, is I add acrylic paints to the background and when I get to the page, I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. This is Drawing From Life. I'm at Pete's in Harvard Square, getting ready to meet up with a bunch of friends and I'm just sketching the people that I'm seeing around me. Again, as I said, double page spreads, not something I do a lot, but I, as, as I was flipping through this journal to cover up some of the address information, I just really like the double edge, double edge spread idea and I, I actually want to do more of that. So this is inspiring me to actually do some of that and hopefully you'll see that in the next um, newer videos of uh, journals that I'm working on. So again, this is all uh, pen and watercolor. Same thing here, pen and watercolor. I'm a sailor, so as in last week's video, I'm always sketching from the cockpit of my boat and this is one we're on a mooring right off George's Island and the thing about this is even though it's a simple pencil and watercolor sketch I can remember this actual day right so this is July 11th of 2012 but I can actually remember this particular evening and I think there's something really fun um, to be said for that so again really hot sketching from life at JP Licks and JP um, doing a self-portrait with pen and watercolor. It's kind of fun to see how that looks. Again, double page spread. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuffed animals in my house and, you know, kind of sketching what we have there. Playing with acrylics a lot here. Again, my older journals tend to have an outline of a hand with some zentangling on the inside as I take notes on different things. 
trying to sketch people that I'm seeing. I think I saw an image of this woman somewhere online and I kind of liked the flower in her hair with the um, colorful necklace that she had. So kind of playing with that. Again, pattern play. And I know this because it is true across my journals. Anytime there's patterns, I tend to be listening to an audiobook or a podcast. And there's something, again, thinking about a page in terms of color. So I kind of like the juxtaposition of kind of, you know, hard lines here versus circles, right? Boxes versus circles. I'm kind of enjoying this. And again, all of these circles just come from a circle template. I just moved it around and changed the size of that. Uh, watercolor in both of these cases, as is everything here, is watercolor. So again, I kind of like sketching from life, sketching from things that inspire me that I find online. Um, it's one of the few pages that I did not add color to, but I kind of like just kind of testing it out, playing with how you make something look like the person. And I remember... Um, you know, playing with that a little bit to just kind of get a sense of how do I do a background there. Again, masks, it's always fun to take a look. They're so colorful to draw. And I really love these. Now, I've done some of this in the older videos, um, older journals that flips that you have seen, and I'm trying to bring that back into my newer uh, creative play as well, is I love having an image and then text in the background as the background image of the text. So I think this must be a... Um, what is it called? The little thing that comes with a T. I really love this particular image. I, I love this guy. I should try you know, recreating him again. Again, Zentangle, which means I was listening to an audiobook. This is again all pen um, and ink and watercolors. Just kind of playing with that. Same thing, kind of playing with images, drawing a statue. Like I said, I'm really loving, as I'm going back through my older journal, seeing kind of framing the art with a box of text. And I kind of want to bring that back in. Um, as always, as I said earlier, the sketches from graphic novels that I'm reading. And so just kind of trying to capture people based on how other artists do them. And it's kind of fun to see. And then I know this particular case, it's pen with markers. So everything here you see is actually involved markers. Um, really fun, right? Just This is an image I think I saw at a Native American installation. It was either the museum in Washington or maybe it had been what was here in the MFA, but kind of just like kind of playing with that a little bit. Sketching from life, people that I'm looking at. In this particular case, I'm using watercolor pencils. You know, again, creating a border. I don't do that as much as well uh, today, and I'm thinking about bringing that back into my journals because I kind of like how borders look when you're looking at a page. So here again are, you know, I often leave pages blank and then every now and then I'll go ahead, especially when I'm working on other art projects, there's always leftover paint. And what I do is I turn to the next page or some other journal that's in my stash waiting to go and I go ahead and splash the paint down, so as you can see here. And what happened is I was meeting up with a bunch of friends at the Harvard National History Museum here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we went to that museum and I wanted to just sketch the shells that I was looking at so the, the page already has background color. And that's something that I find often works because sometimes looking at the blank page can be intimidating. So having some color already down gives you something to, to you know, jump off of as opposed to just looking at a, a, a white blank page. And what I remember vividly, again, I remember this um, the sketching here. And I remember a kid, people would always, the, the place was packed at the time. And I remember these kids coming by to watch me sketch, right? So this one little kid, I remember, especially with this shell and that shell, he just stood over my shoulders because I'm sitting on the ground sketching. And he stood over my shoulder, kind of just watching and having his own commentary about that. Same thing here. The watercolor the, and acrylics were already, I think this is both, actually, these are both acrylic backgrounds. The acrylics were already on here. You can see there's some stenciling. So I was using that stencil for some other artwork. I just basically cleared my stencil on this page. And then I come to this page and I'm like, what am I going to do with it? It's a very busy background. Well, the Harvard Museum has got these ovaries, kind of cross sections of plants and flowers. And I thought, okay, it's a perfect way to use just pen and marker to create that. And I kind of really like that. And again, as I said, as one of the things I'm noticing in this journal that I would like to bring back to how I play today is kind of two page spreads. I just really like how that looks. The kind of aesthetic of that again here, just it works really well. I'm waiting for a friend. There's already acrylic paint on the background. I go ahead and do the sketching in pen. 
we go ahead and you know we hang out and chat and I come back home and I added all the rest of the colors using markers that were you know in my stash so I always love adding tip-ins and a lot of my tip-ins tend to be postcards that I get from friends or um, relatives from various places again there's acrylic paint here that I just decided to leave blank didn't add anything to it so playing with that uh, cross section of an ovary I just there's something about nature in terms of how it looks that is you know it's so appealing just the the, the patterns you find there again postcards um, Christmas stuff this must have been getting closer to us the Christmas time postcards from my friend Pam again here's another one I think this one is from my sister when she was uh, in Italy at the time yep and so again, oh, this was the year I know I had given my nieces and nephews kind of uh, journals with a lock and key. So kind of keeping uh, you know, the cover of that in the journal, which is kind of fun to go back and remember. And then meeting up with some bunch of friends at a, um, a book event. Again, grids. I'm, I'm taking my own inspiration. And I think this is such a fun thing. Do you find inspiration from your own journal? So when you go back and flip through your journals, do you find things that inspire you? If you do, like, give me a like down below so that I know that, you know, others are doing this too. Because I find a lot of times we come up with an idea that works. And then because these journals get put away, we tend to forget that. I love playing with grids and I don't do that as, as much anymore. And I'm this is bringing back to my memory. Like I, I love grids. I like how they look when they're completed. And you can work in grids at your own pace, right? You don't have to do everything all at once. So I am almost positive here, for example, that this grid was filled out over a course of a couple of days and I ended up going and adding the colors. You know what I mean? The, so again, this is pen with markers in the background, uh, inspired by a graphic novel that I was reading. Again, there's cards, uh, birthday cards, Christmas cards. I, I just love keeping, you know, letters from friends in here, uh, the stamps that come in the cards. I just, again, this is a really fun um, image that came in the mail for something. I maintained, uh, I, I tri trimmed out something that came from a friend and attached it to the back. Again, back in the day when my sewing machine wasn't busted, I would go ahead and do this. And the, you'll actually see some of this in my current journal as well, because I have leftover pieces of paper that I have uh, stitched or done some stitching on, and I'm kind of using that up today in my, so, you know, my whole use up my stash idea. Another image of a, again, a stylized woman. I'm kind of playing at this time with what does it look like? And I, and I always keep notes of the, the authors that I'm um, inspired by so that I can go back and look at their work. But I kind of love the colors on this one. A bunch of stuff that came in the mail for Christmas. I just, you know, trimmed out and add pieces to it. Um, again, my sister traveling. And so these are some of the postcards that she sends. And I just, again, I, one of the things that's really fun to me is what do you do with all this stuff? And if you keep them in journals, they're, they're kept in a place you can actually go find them again, as opposed to just sitting in a drawer or in a box somewhere. Again, sketching and listening to podcasts. There's acrylic paint on the background here. One of those glue pages. This is uh, watercolor. And that's where we end up. And so the and, and I've got some, I think it's some quotes from various books that I was reading. So that's what I have for you today. It's this particular flip. As I said, I've got a flip of the other two in this series on my channel, and I'll link them for you if you'd like to take a look at them. Please let me know how you're doing, how you're playing. Um, what are you doing? Are you flipping through older videos? Do you have flips of new videos? I'd love to see them. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And until I see you next time, happy creating. Bye.